The first time I got really excited about doing data-driven material science was for a consulting uh, project, actually. We were hired by Duracell to come up with novel cathodes for alkali and batteries. It was really exciting to learn about what were bottlenecks for them, how we could use our methods to screen hundreds or tens of thousands, up to 100,000 different formulations for a cathode chemistry, and in the end, convince their internal team that we actually had something to bring to the table, that we were able to give them new chemistries and structures that they haven't thought about. We've designed uh, novel materials, and when we design, I meant we successfully first predicted them to be um, good in a certain space, and then somebody else, not us, would synthesize it and test it, and it actually works as predicted. One example was a piezoelectric material, so those are materials that when you push on them, they create an electric field. Uh, the user sensors. We have predicted novel cathode materials, um, both for magnesium ion batteries, for example. Some of them have been made, some of them have been challenging to synthesize. So one of the efforts going forward is to understand synthesis of materials better. When I was a graduate student, um, it was an emergent field and because we didn't have very powerful computers and the algorithms weren't very robust, you would spend an entire year calculating one property for one material. Now, because the, the, the software to solve the Schrodinger equation has gotten a lot better uh, and we have supercomputers and we've been writing these um, infrastructure codes to allow us to do this very efficiently and bring back the information and analyze it on the fly, we can now screen materials in the computer 